Welcome back to Victory Woodworks with Vic, and I'm Vic. In this week's episode, what we're going to do is we're going to build this multi-tiered uh, plant stand, but we're going to do it two different ways and two different videos. In this video, we're going to build this using standard power tools and a standard uh, uh, woodworking techniques. And in the accompanying video, we're going to build this using the uh, CNC as much as possible. Hopefully you'll enjoy this. Stay tuned. All right, step one in both of these builds is to get the lumber off the lumber pile and cut it down to more manageable pieces where, uh, where we can glue up, actually we'll need a few pieces to glue up some blanks. Now it's not hard picking out the lumber. We're gonna be using maple and I've only got one maple board. So here we are, day two of our build. Our large panel is glued up. Why don't we take this apart and see uh, see what it looks like? Okay, you can see we've got a nice glue seam all the way down. Uh, okay, not bad, not bad on either side. Okay, we need a little standing up. Then we got to cut this in half for our 12 inch rounds. Now we're going to sand the panel smooth on the, uh, the wide belt sander, actually double drum sander. Now we're going to cut our panel into two 14 inch sections. Uh, yeah, we've got 28 inch. Yeah, two 14 inch sections so we can put in two round 12 inch discs, which are going to be the bottom of our plant stand. Now, some people may be concerned making this sort of a cut. It's a wide panel up against the fence, cutting here, pinching going off. But what I'm going to do is I'm going to put most of my force this way. And let that uh, that end kind of go free, and then we should be fine. Although those are famous last words. These uh, maple boards were originally cut for an end grain cutting board, but I'm going to repurpose them for this uh, for this build. So essentially, these are uh, one and five eighths by one and an eighth, but we need them to be one inch square. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna set this up to one inch and we're gonna cut them both one inch square. We've got our two one inch by, this gotta be like 40 inches. These are gonna be stands for our, yeah, 40 inches. These are gonna be this, the vertical stands for our plant stand. But we're gonna cut these into nine, 12, and 15 inches on the chop saw. We're gonna cut our verticals for the plant stand here on the chop saw. So first thing I'm gonna do is square up the end, then cut them 
15, 12, and nine. We're gonna put the block here, draw a line across, flip it 180, draw another line across, and as you can see, the lines are dead on. So what we're gonna then do, is just rotate it 90. Now we've got cross right in the middle. But because we're gonna be using this doweling jig to help us align stuff, what we're gonna do is we're gonna put some lines down the side just to give us a little alignment mark. And so it doesn't matter which way we, we do this. I'm gonna put it on all four sides. So as you can see, here it is up front. And from the side view, as I spin it around, you can see all of the alignment marks. Now the idea is to center this in the first, first hole, we're gonna be cutting, it's gonna be quarter inch. We're gonna be using this drill bit. That's basically our pilot to go in because we've got an exact quarter inch. This, this nut here, I believe is 5 16 which is a little bit bigger than our 23 or our 21 64 so we're gonna try. So by doing that, we got a better chance of going perfectly straight. Although perfection, in this case, is not 100% required. Okay, what I've decided to do to make it a little easier is clamp in the little stop block in here, make it easier to align our board where it needs to be. All right, our pilot holes are good. Okay, what we're gonna do is put a little dab of super glue inside where the threads go, not all the way down, and hopefully that'll hold the, uh, the uh, thread insert a little bit better. Next step in our project is gonna be put chamfer on all the edges, including around here. So we put it together, it's got a, got a nicer look to it. It's basically just a little design element. Okay, so we've got all of our posts all set to go. Uh, still need a little sanding, but we'll do that uh, momentarily. Uh, and then we've gotta cut out the circles. Oh, glorious sanding. Bring back the good old COVID days. The circle for what we're gonna cut out. Now here, we're just trying to find the center of this piece of wood. And it's about there. So we're going to be using a, a router jig, a circle cutting router jig from uh, Milescraft. I just picked it up at uh, Lowe's just, just the other day. And they've got a mini one too, and they've got a, a larger one too. So what we're going to do is we're going to follow instructions for that. Uh, I'm assuming put some sort of pin in here, spin it around, and... Uh, and cut out our our 12 inch hole. We also need to lay out our our holes where we're going to be cutting through into um, to be able to secure our posts because essentially they're going to go like this. One here, well, not that one. One over here. Try and get these to balance, and then one over here. What we're gonna do is we're going to slight pilot hole right here in the middle. The reason it's okay, because uh, this is on the back side, we're going to screw this down. Now this screw is very short, I think it's like a half inch screw. A little too tight. I'm gonna give it a little motion. And we're gonna set the uh, clamp here for uh, outside 12 inches. And let's give it a quick 
once around just to see what we look like. So this piece screws in here. Hopefully you guys can see that also. Butts up right in there. Now I've already preset the drill bit, uh, the router bit, so that it goes through and then some. Now what we're going to do is we're going to lay out the three six inch um, dishes uh, on this piece. So let's just get our, our compass set up here. Now, in case you guys are wondering, I'm using a Starrett uh, compass here, which I bought for, I don't know, 15 bucks or something like that. I do not recommend it. Uh, you push too hard and the legs start going out. I'm just doing this so I make sure I can space out my circles properly. Yeah, see that right there? It just started uh, moving on me. All right, there's one. Let's do the same thing from this side. Let's see if we can get two in the corners and one here in the center. That should be good. So So we have our, our three circles. I don't know if you can see them. There's one over here with the center right there, one here in the middle, the center right there, and one right here, with the center right there. We're gonna do the same, same process. Double-sided tape down, drill a little hole, spin it, cut it out. So the last piece we need to manufacture for our multi-tiered plant stand is basically the cross piece that's going to sit like this and like this in between the verticals so that uh, they basically don't wobble and don't let your plant fall off the top. So I did this, I, I did this as a kind of a prototype piece. Uh, and what I've also done here, let me bring it up close. Again, as I'm channeling my inner Vanna. So here's a little picture of what we're, what we're trying to do. Here is our arc. This is the piece we're trying to make, which is, which is right here. This is one of the posts that's gonna be sticking up vertically. So what we're doing is from this point, we're cutting an arc on the inside for four inches, arc on the outside for five inches. And that corresponds with the locations of where the, um, the actual posts are going to be in the plant stand. So let's see if we can cut this out of that. So we're gonna draw this on there. Probably saw about halfway through, I was getting ready to redraw everything when I realized, hey, these are all parts of the same circle. So if I did this, why don't I just keep extending all the way out and I can do the second one on this side. And I've got a little play in between just to figure out what else I need to do. If, if there's like a little adjustment I have to make on the pieces themselves. So there you go. So we essentially have all of our parts that we need for our, our three-tiered or multi-tiered uh, plant stand. These are the bases that go up top on multiple levels. These are going to be at different levels holding in these, which are the actual stands that are going to be standing like this with one of these screwed in on top like that, actually, probably this way. So next thing we're going to have to do is basically clean up these edges. We'll take these on the router. We're going to make these look like these with the chamfered edge. We're going to chamfer all around all of our all of our circles also. 
and we're going to put in our our through holes uh, for the bolts that are kind of come up from the bottom of this base up into stands. Our next step is going to be to drill a few holes into each of these pieces to accommodate a one inch quarter 20 bolt and a washer. We're going to, since these are going to be on the top, we're going to put the, the, uh, the screw from the top here. And then what we're going to do for these, we're going to do, put it from the bottom. Okay, so what we're doing is we're going to drill out our spacer holes uh, or our pilot holes just so we know what's going to happen on the other side. And uh, just using a tiny bit. Doesn't really matter what size it is as long as it's less than a quarter inch. Okay, so we've got those holes in place. Now we're going to use is spot them on this side. So this is about where that little cross piece is going to go. So now what we got to do is figure out that height where we want it, drill through the side right into these and this, and then put in two more threads in there and we can bolt this together. Sounds easy. So what I've done is I've cut down a piece of scrap to about eight inches tall and I'm just going to put a line there across this piece here in here, because that's exactly where we want our, our screw hole to be, right there in the center. Um, foster out the hole for the washer, and then screw right through. So what we've done is we've marked the center line right here, and that's what we're gonna do with the drill press, is we're going to dimple it like we did last time, and then we're going to drill right through with the uh, with the quarter inch drill, or the... perfect, right we're right where we want to be. Now, what we can do is we can take our doweling jig, line up the line of where we want to be, and just plunge our quarter inch drill right into the middle of it. And as you can see, drew drew a little center line right there on the side, and that's how we have it lined up right inside um, in there. All right, let's drill it through. Let's see what happens. Okay. Perfect little hole right through. And we're just going to give it a light chamfer on the other side, just so that uh, there are no burrs and prevents anything from connecting. Now the question is, uh, how do we make holes in here go all the way through? We're definitely going to use the uh, the doweling jig, but first we're going to have to come up with. Um, the centers on this. Okay. So then we're going to take this and align it. Totally worked. So we have our roughly assembled uh, plant stand. What we're gonna do now is we're gonna sand everything and then we're gonna finish everything. And then this plant stand will be done. The next step we're gonna do here is we're going to apply tongue oil finish to all of our pieces. But before we do that, uh, just so you know, we sand it down uh, all the way 
And then we're going to use this tack cloth. And the reason I call it tack cloth is because it's very tacky. Uh, no jokes there. And we're just going to try to get any, any wood dust that may still be on here off. Now because this is uh, maple, it's going to be very light. You can see it's taken on a slightly whitish reddish color. So we have uh, coat one done. Uh, I'm going to hang this or put it in my little box. I don't want this to spontaneously catch fire and uh, torch the place. So uh, we'll be back in a little while. Wipe it off, and then uh, we'll see if we need another coat. I think uh, we might. So here we are at the reveal. So this is our project, and this is our prototype. This is where we started from. I used all kinds of scrap pieces here. Plywood, some old oak here, more plywood and plywood. And you can see it's a little bit different. You got the full U in. That, that may work for some of you folks. I decided to go uh, just with segments instead at different levels. Thought I gave it a little more character. And you can see that these are a whole lot taller. Uh, this works, but the taller the plant stand is and the bigger the plant, the more it has a potential, let's say, to fall off and cause a mess. So I decided to bring these all lower. So uh, 9, 12, and 15. Here it's 9, 15, and I think 20 uh, is what I did with the prototype. So either way, it's up to you. You can make the heights, whatever heights you like. You can make, uh, you, you can use any kind of wood you want. It's really up to you. This is your project. So here it is. Let's give it a quick uh, demo. So you've got three verticals. You've got one, one for here. Uh, the plant here helps stabilize everything. Although a 12 inch saucer on the bottom tends to uh, keep everything pretty stable anyway. So again, it's up to you. Nine inch, you could. 12, like I did, you could, it's up to you. These six inch, I chose six inch because that's about the size of most pots, of uh, the smaller pots. So this one I think is like a, a four inch pot, so you can see it fits nicely in there. And then I have another one here. As you can see, at, I think that's a six inch pot. So six inch fits perfectly right on top, four inch fits also. So you can, you can mix and match, whatever you like. It's up to you. So here's our completed project. Um, came out all right, kind of nice. Uh, as good as I would have expected. Uh, a couple couple lessons learned from, from this whole process. The first is uh, no project is complete until you've been to Home Depot at least three times. The second is, as opposed to using the quarter 20 regular bolts, I would have used, or potentially would have considered using, truss bolts. Difference between a quarter 20 bolt and a quarter 20 truss bolt is essentially the truss bolt head is a little bit bigger than the quarter 20 bolt. This way it eliminates the need of a washer and it's a little bit shorter in height. So this way maybe we could have recessed this, uh, these holes a little bit less. Although I don't think it really does anything one way or the other. I mean, it's your choice. Uh, and the third thing is potentially not having the, uh, the bolts exposed. Originally, I wanted to use that as a design element to kind of mix organic and modern. Um, I'm not sure it quite came out exactly the way I wanted it, but I may fill these with a plug or something along those lines, or next time use a different type of connector between the verticals and the cross pieces. Now, the reason I thought to use bolts was because this was actually a request from one of my daughters who's at college and wanted something that she could uh, put her plants on. So this has basically got 10 screws or 10 bolts in it. So it's pretty easy to assemble. Three for the top dishes, three for the vertical legs, and then four to get the cross pieces hooked in together. Simple, simple construction. All you need is one Phillips or a flathead screwdriver. That's it. So from that perspective, it, it's kind of simple. So here it is. If you like what you've seen here or learned something new, please like and subscribe to our channel. Help us grow. See you in the next video.